Uh, good afternoon, guys. Can you hear my voice? Yes, sir. yes sir. Good afternoon. Okay. Uh, good afternoon. We will start the class. Uh, we'll wait just one or two minutes. Uh, we'll start the class. Let me share my slide. Could you see my screen? Yes, yes sir. sir. Visual. Yes, let me see. OK, so we got 53 students. All right, so let us now start today's class. <clears throat> Many of you uh, would have heard what is operating system. Uh, like many of you have used uh, in your respective laptops or in your phone, smartphones, heard like Android operating system or Windows 10 operating system, uh, Linux operating system, and so on and so forth. Uh, but what actually an operating system does, and what actually the behind the screen, what happens, is what we're going to uh, thoroughly look into this course. Uh, <clears throat> may not in depth, but at least you'll get an idea what are the jobs of operating system by, the, by this end of this class. Uh, but in detail, the things that we are going to study, uh, we will go through briefly what actually a brief overview of operating system uh, today. But uh, as we are discussing, if you are not able to understand or if you feel bored or if you want to ask questions or interact, feel free to do that. But uh, a brief overview you will understand. Uh, in the subsequent classes, we will try to discuss few concepts in detail. Okay. Um, in the lecture one, I gave you a brief uh, overview of what actually is a computer. Uh, what are the input devices? What are the output devices? What is the storage devices? What is the difference among them? And with try to picture, uh, I try to show them. Uh, I show, uh, we try to understand uh, by various pictures. I guess most of you would have uh, most of most of you would have understood that class and if you are not uh, please go through the lecture one slide um, but uh, 
one has to be very clear what are the input devices what are the output devices what are the storage devices and what actually is operating system thus with this uh, all this uh, devices we will we, we have to be understanding right when i say io devices it's actually input output devices okay so is this clear like whatever we discussing so far is this clear right yes sir okay um, one more thing is uh, i would like to teach my class strictly in hindi uh, strictly in english not in hindi uh, if you are not able to understand also uh, if you are facing any difficulty in understanding the language please uh, you can stop me i will repeat and make try to make you understand that can also we can try to do but uh, because our college students are representing from across the country at different places i believe uh, english everybody will understand okay so with that assumption again uh, let us start uh, today's class <clears throat> so today's class will be more theoretical uh, there won't be much pictures but then uh, uh these are very important things also there are no other way to uh, put you to if if there would have been a class i could have made more interactive uh, way of discussing things by asking questions or by interacting but since this is online class uh, due to some limitations uh, there are many things i have to explain in the slides using text rather than image uh, so please bear with me so <clears throat> an operating system is a software first you have to understand that operating system is a software it's not a hardware that manages computer hardware so we have computer hardware we have printer we have cpu we have processor we have memory they are all hardwares right you have monitor they are all hardwares now uh, when i open and uh, see uh, the as i showed like in the previous class Uh, the operating system what i am using now is windows 10 now what happens in windows 10 uh, is like uh, there is a hardware where each and every instructions are executed but i want to run an application uh, say in browser okay so for example now i will show you that there are uh, you can see my screen right there is a browser this is a browser i am taking the class the browser i am using Uh, to log in into ms teams and i am using powerpoint presentation so these are all application software that we try to understand but <clears throat> how uh, this how 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 uh, when i want to when i'm clicking it to full screen or when i'm pressing an escape and uh, trying to move to the other screen like browser how it happens is like inside uh, inside uh, the monitor displays what i am trying to say using my input action using keyboard or mouse i am trying to do something with my mouse giving some instructions so when i do something on my mouse or keyboard those instructions will be fetched to the uh, to the particular process which is executing inside the uh, processor right so each process will be stored in a ram and the ram will take the instructions to execute that and once we do that approximately uh, uh, i mean like appropriately we could able to see that corresponding actions are happening the hardware is responding to the actions what i am doing who is managing the hardware like the screen should be projected or the mouse when i do something the respective action should happen is the hardware manager is uh, how, who does that is a software called operating system okay so an operating system acts an intermediary between the computer user and the computer hardware so in elder, in in earlier days when a computer was introduced uh, the first computer operating system looks like uh, ddos operating system okay uh, just it looks like command prompt if you go to command prompt uh, let me show you see this is the command prompt when you turn on your operating system this will look like this microsoft windows Microsoft Corporation. All it looks like this. Now, when I want to access a file, I want to see what are the file. I have to give commands like these are my list of files. And uh, if I want to change to a particular directory, say, see to uh, change directory to desktop. Everything I have to give in 
uh, commandments. So again, I want to see some files. You can see that uh, when the date was created, the time, uh, what is the file name, everything, it looks like uh, this was the original operating system when it was developed, when it was designed okay, in earlier days. The purpose why an operating system is needed is to have an interface with hardware. Now dealing with hardware, hardware understands only ones and zeros. It's very difficult for a human being to communicate with the hardware. So operating system will come in as an interface. This is called command line interface. Okay, everything what I want to do, uh, move or command, you would have learned in first year uh, programming about Linux, like various command uh, lines. Even the Windows was like that, the Linux operating system, I will show you that. And by the end of the class, I will show some demonstration also, uh, how you can carry out. But an operating system, when you turn on a machine, it will look like this. But now the operating system, when you turn on, it will, it is looking like, looking like this. You have a graphical user interface. You can change your screen. You can, uh, you have a browser that will make you to connect the internet. Uh, how, how you can see that interface? See, when I'm clicking uh, the interface, like I can easily go to, just by mouse clicking to a particular drive, uh, you can do this all, this is called graphical user interface. Okay, this is graphical user interface as the technology evolved, the way we are interfacing with the hardware evolved. Okay, the graphical user interface is also nothing but uh, an, an uh, act of uh, communicating with the hardware, right? Now, I, this is the, this is my hard disk. What I'm doing when I'm clicking F drive, when I'm clicking C drive, when I'm clicking F drive, what I'm trying to do is, I'm trying to access my hard drive which is having the storage of my files. So when I click uh, this drive, I'm directly accessing the uh, my hard drive, inside the hard drive with a mouse click. So my input mouse click is uh, making some action. I'm instructing uh, an operating system uh, to open a particular file in a hard drive. So the this, this graphical user interface will help me to do that. So when I click a particular file or a folder, uh, uh, the operating system understands that what I want and it will communicate uh, to the hard drive. The operating system will communicate to the hard drive and uh, via processor, right? Everything happens via processor and the operating system uh, does that via processor and uh, it fetches the file. It loads the file from hard drive to RAM, RAM to processor and there you go, you will open the file. Okay, this file has been opened. So uh, when a user wants to communicate anything, it, it, it happens the same with your Android operating system also. When you touch something on your screen, uh, when an app should open on the top of it, the app is not an operating system, right? You install Microsoft Teams or you install uh, YouTube, you install Gmail, they are not operating system, they are a particular applications. But however, an interface will be there between you and the hardware of your smartphone, which is nothing but an Android operating system, will act as an intermediary that will manage your hardware resources for you. Okay, so that's what an operating system does. Uh, the fundamental responsibility of an operating system is to allocate the resources to the programs. So now <clears throat> you have to understand two things. One is uh, we have resources and we have programs. Okay. Uh, the resources means we have we have a processor, we have memory, we have input output devices, we have storage. These are all the resources. Now, <clears throat> I want to run an application. I want to run a program. Say I want to project this PowerPoint. So that is that is one program. And I want to uh, when I want to run this uh, program of PowerPoint. Inside, what happens is when I click, when I try to open this PowerPoint a process will create inside uh, the operating system. The process will be assigned with a unique ID and the process, if it has to work, it needs to be executed by the processor. So what operating system will do is, it will load that particular application to main memory and set by set of instruction, it will try to read uh, what is input, what is output, all the devices it will try to 
execute instructions by loading into memory to processor. Does this make sense? What I'm saying so far? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Fine. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So, in other words, we can say that you see, you see this. We have a computer hardware. We have a processor, memory, input, output device. And on the other end, we have a user. Like I'm a user, you are looking at other user. What operating system does is the operating system will act as intermediary between the computer hardware and the application programs. The application programs is nothing but the web browser which I'm using or the PowerPoint. These are the application programs which make my job easy as a user. Uh, the operating system will communicate predominantly with application programs and computer hardware. And uh, uh, it can you can consider this application programs and operating system as a one one block. Then uh, the operating system is directly making a favor of user uh, communicating between the user and the computer hardware. Okay, but uh, user the operating system will uh, start. But if you want to run a particular application, you want to play a video, you want to start a PowerPoint, you want to access an internet using browser then particular application you will install this applications will interface will interface between you and the operating system does this make sense yes sir right <clears throat> so as i told the views the user views are different because nowadays uh, you have laptops pcs mobile devices such as smartphones tablets embedded computers there are so many devices so user view will change like some user view will uh, do with touch screen some user view like how an operating system should work like nowadays voice recognition like siri will come i will say something and it will recognize and it will start an application or with a little user view like how the gamma uh, there is no user view at all like uh, if you come with embedded operating systems uh, uh, like washing machine or refrigerator we use real time operating system there also we have uh, operating system is working behind right uh, you air condition you control with your remote your tv screen you control with remote there also we have some operating system is going on uh, we call that as a real time operating system perhaps you will study uh, in your upcoming courses okay in electronics so predominantly we will use microcontroller uh, power electronics uh, will come for that you will use microcontroller which is nothing but an embedded c programming this is looking like more or less embedded c programming so that will if if any program has to work you need to provide some interface to make it work right so there you will use real time operating system so user view will change but the operating system the purpose it is designed is to make a users uh, ease of use now instead of going to a command changing directory from one folder to another folder to a file i would feel very easy by touching a screen to open it or uh, by just moving a mouse click uh, which is very predominantly easy than typing entire command i have to remember the commands what are the commands that i need to execute <coughs> if the command is wrong or if the instructions what i'm trying to give is wrong that will make my job difficult Instead of that, uh, I'll just uh, click on Z and click on play. That is very easy, right? So the operating system is designed mostly uh, to make uh, ease of use and some attention paid to the performance and security and let <coughs> excuse me, less attention paid to the resource utilization means how this hardware and software resources are shared. Now, uh, when I run two, three applications, for example, now I'm running uh, PowerPoint. Now I want to play a video. Uh, now what will happen? This monitor, I want to do both at a time, uh, playing a video and showing a PowerPoint. Will it be possible? Yes, sir. Right. But now, now uh, sharing my whole screen now, either now I want to play some, I want to see what is the Google News today. Suppose I will click here and I will open a Google News. Now I want to show the what is a presentation. Now I can do one at a time, right? Means the monitor is shared to a particular process. I mean, like uh, it is uh, sorry. The monitor is now uh, the PowerPoint is using uh, my monitor, right? When I want to 
play some video or watch some video then the monitor will be used by the other application right now uh, but this both application i am simultaneously running i am running this powerpoint screen sharing using microsoft powerpoint then in my memory both this process are shared if either one of them will not work you will be not able to see the uh, slide uh, if my powerpoint stops working or either browser is stopped working either this case you will be not able to see what is happening in the screen so my powerpoint and the browser they both are running simultaneously inside my processor they are sharing they are sharing its memory they are sharing the process execution so this both are softwares and sharing the hardware resources so it would be difficult for me to handle all these things as a user to make understand the hardware but operating system does that so these are the purpose of how operating system is designed how an hardware and software resources are shared how uh, to make it very use uh, ease of use and uh, when we design an operating system of course we need to pay some attention to the performance like when i am when i design an operating system my system should not running very slowly or very fastly that it should not happen right so uh, we have to make sure that performance and security also uh, matters so there are many things we need to look after that uh, when we consider an operating system is it okay shall we go ahead excuse me sir yes sir i got that uh, this point is a four point which you explained but but i do not understand that what is user view sir user view is like how a user will try to look into few things okay like for example uh, uh you the user how he is interacting with the hardware how a user is interacting with the hardware is what user view is okay in the sense uh user how he is interacting with the hardware some interact with hardware using voice siri app some interact with touch screen some interact with keyboard and mouse like how we do with our personal system some with no interaction like when you uh, do with uh, like i said uh, real time operating systems like air condition or uh, some other ways you will not interface at all with an operating system the view Sir, of what are the yeah the view of operating system how it should be it changes it varies from application to application that's what i'm trying to say sir there there is written little or no user view sir what does that means like that's what i'm saying like when you are using an application like microwave oven how do you use an operating system there sir we Uh, set the buttons and it starts functioning like that Be because it's very limited it's very little view yes sir yes sir okay sir and, i got it uh, because you touch you touch screen in your smartphone you predominantly do the user interface should be very touch right most of the things you touch and play you can do that using voice recognition like uh, alexa siri most of the things also you will do with voice recognition there also the operating system is working but there are be there might be some uh, applications where you will be interacting with very less uh, one or uh, very very less will over you and uh, there will be no user view also and there will be very less little over little uh, view that's what the deep varies there are many views of how you are uh, how you are looking into an operating system so operating system is not one should not uh, restrict yourself that no 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 it should be only touch screen no no it should be only voice recognition no it should be only keyboard or mouse it's not like that operating system can be viewed as different uh, different views uh, with different aspects it varies from user to user and application to application that's what i'm trying to say Yes, sir. Fine, sir. I got it. Right. So, 
operating system is mostly in, uh, most intimately involved with hardware okay so one 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 way we can see that operating system is a resource allocator how uh, the processor and the memory uh, input output devices they are all all uh, allocated with respect to a particular application or a particular process program is what we can view as an operating system this is system view okay user views from how an application will launch but a system view will look operating system as a resource allocator okay from computer perspective if you see what is an operating system is uh, it is a resource allocator this is system view right so a system the computer system has many resources that may be required to solve a problem like how much cpu time i should give to a particular process so if i allocate uh, say one hour to a process if another process i want to execute second process should i need to wait till the process will finish if the first process will finish then uh, or can i make it some other way uh, to efficiently using my cp how my memory space is shared how my storage space is shared uh, is many many things we need to look into it and that's how the from the system point of view a computer system has many resources that may be required to solve the problem if two process is competing that i want the memory space or i want the storage space or i want the printer uh, who will who who whom you will decide that who will go first okay so there are many things involved in this from system point of view an operating system is a resource allocator but from user point of view it might be a simple way of uh, communicating with the hardware with ease of use uh, it might be via touch screen it might be via uh, voice recognition it might be via keyboard whatever it is so the operating system acts as a manager of all these resources so the operating system must decide how to allocate them uh, to specific programs and users so that it can operate computer system efficiently and fairly right so that's what the operating system does now suppose for example i am i want to uh, run an application and uh, uh, that process is executing now so in between uh in order to complete that process in between it needs an input output device now what process will do you it will say that you go and uh, uh, do the job of input output device until then the process will sit idle right because if it executes one process at a time the if the processor executes one process at a time and if the process leaves in between to do some other input output device activity the process will sit idle whereas that time you can fetch the second process and leave in between and come back uh, once the first process input output job is done then process 2 can wait for some time but it can execute to some extent so that's where uh, we will try to execute processes how the process management will happen how the cpu utilization uh, will increase how uh, uh, the speed of processor is too fast but the ram uh, speed might be very slow how this mismatch uh, can be executed suppose if your ram is 2 gb and you want to play a movie of 4 gb will, will will your system will be able to play yes sir no sir how is <laughs> how is it possible it will not play sir sir but initially like when 512 mb rams were coming then also like the mobiles were playing of one gb in parts parts sir like that it is distributing sir when a small mobile used to come that time also we were watching movies there so ah, then in how your, it, your, was that possible yeah yes exactly so how you are uh, in your smartphones if you are using if you are if you play a movie which is more than your ram your mobile will play na yes sir yes sir so how does how does it does that i mean your data file what you are accessing is more than your ram but still the system is able to play 
how the memory is managed there this is also an interesting idea all these things will be handled by operating system okay there is a called virtual memory i will discuss that in the upcoming slides but in detail we will discuss in the subsequent classes but you will be able to play because of virtual memory management so the memory management the process management uh, and uh, the uh, storage management file management how a file is stored where when you install a when you install an application say you install uh, one application uh, that application will be stored in c drive in a particular order right you install windows operating system you install program <clears throat> so when i install microsoft office so it creates a microsoft office folder inside the office folder it creates some document set of documents i did not create this right i did not create this but when we install an operating system by default it created all this uh, set of files how uh, it should work that goes with every application so how the files are managed because or the way it stores when i'm running to when i'm trying to run an application it works properly when i see i'm projecting um, microsoft powerpoint it goes to that particular position where it installed the processor fetches from that particular place and loads into the main memory and executes by the processor so how the files are stored in a way that the applications are running properly uh, how the operating system manages all these things is what actually it's decided like the operating system must decide how to allocate uh, allocate the <clears throat> resources what we discussed like cpu time and memory space storage space input devices and the users uh, can operate the computer system efficiently and fairly okay so this is what an operating system does so a slightly different way of operating system we can emphasize <coughs> emphasize as the need to control the various input output devices and programs so the operating system uh, the another a slight different view is you can control uh, how an input output devices and the user programs are controlled is also uh, one view of an operating system which is the main role of operating system operating system control is also called as a controller control program so a control program manages execution of user programs to prevent errors and improper use of the computer so it is especially concerned with the operation and the control of input devices this is another view from the uh, system view perspective this is make sense what we are trying what we are trying to discuss yes sir right so let us define now an operating system in the previous class i gave some definition but uh, th that is just for your understanding but this class we will try to understand in detail what is the definition of uh, operating system see the fundamental the fundamental goal of a computer system is to execute programs and making uh, to make solving the user problems easier right that's what the computer is doing now uh, now i want to uh, we, we are conducting this online class is because uh, an operating system is coming and helping us to a great extent and uh, the programs have been executed uh, we are on the other side we are able to listen the class we are able to run this multiple programs at a time uh, which is solving our problem and making it very easy right to take the class so a computer not only with respect to this application or with respect to any other application if you want to watch a movie uh, to capture a movie or to convert that into a good editable image and providing that an interface uh, it's very difficult right now in olden days if you want to watch a movie we used to go to theaters right we used to go to theaters but now uh, the interface has been so developed like you can watch in many apps like netflix amazon prime you are just sitting and watching that those are all a different technological perspective but uh, that has nothing to do with operating system but however uh, when the operating system is when you are trying to play in your system on your mobile it's executing it's executing the programs and uh, even though they are complicated it is making our job easy okay indirectly indirectly the operating system is coming to the picture where uh, it's making the ease uh, for our uh, for to achieve our goals so computer hardware is constructed uh, to make it very fast now i want to calculate uh, two large prime numbers uh, for the security purpose uh, 
and hard work would be an easy way that's why uh, the uh, the calculators were invented the calculators are helpful to some extent uh, but if you have to run an application like uh, a simulation like how a rocket will launch uh, it will go in orbit in a particular position uh, these are all things we could do it in hardware but if you go for sophisticated applications there is need of general purpose general purpose uh, general purpose hardware uh, that's where uh, the main the main goal of uh, computer invention is to have a general purpose scientific calculator right it's not just a calculator but in if i want to run any application uh, with respect to general purpose uh, that is a main goal for the invention of computer but if, which led to uh, dramatically or drastically uh, bigger way of achieving things but a computer goal is achieved to execute programs and making solve solving the user problems easier but bare hardware alone is not particularly is easy to use so application programs are developed these programs require certain common operations such as controlling the input output devices and the common functions of controlling and allocating resources are then brought together in one piece of a software called an operating system okay is this make sense what we are trying to say so the fundamental goal of a computer systems is to execute programs and making solve user problems easier to do that we went for computer hardware but computer hardware is alone is not helpful uh, to make these applications to make uh, programs or solving our problems easier and hence application programs are developed particular applications are developed but these programs need input output devices uh, to control them and a common function of controlling and allocating resources are then brought together into one piece of software called the operating system does this make sense yes sir okay so uh, there is one more uh, couple of things you need to understand is the operating system is a one program running at all times on the computer usually called kernel okay the operating system is one program running all the times on the computer usually called kernel so what happens when you start a computer so when you start a computer how uh, the computer hardware hardware will remind uh, that this is the operating system it should load anyone has any idea sir in bios it will select hard disk and then it will load from master boot record the location and kernel image will be loaded mm -hmm. okay anyone else how many of you heard the word bootstrap bootstrap program anyone heard bootstrap b o o t boot bootstrap s t a r a p strap program yes sir i heard i used sir right in what so, sir yeah so when you turn on a computer or a laptop what happens is the first program that will load is bootstrap program the bootstrap program is a permanent program which will provide you the link to the operating system so when you turn on an operating when you turn on a computer the power will come and see the first program is bootstrap from there the operating system is linked and the processor uh, i mean the operating system is loaded first into the main memory there after it is keep on executed executed uh, by the processor and that happens by the time when you start the operating system okay when you switch on and when you see some colors are coming uh, what happens inside that is bootstrap program is loaded it is loading your operating system and it is executing your operating system and uh, the once the operating system is executed it will stay in the computer itself which is the main program of operating system is called kernel even though you don't run any application you don't run microsoft powerpoint you don't run browser you don't run anything you turn on your computer just sit idle 
by default uh, the operating system will keep running on the background because operating system is also a software after uh, uh, operating system is also software when i say software a software is again a set of programs a program is again a set of instructions a set of instructions are executed by the processor right so by default some space of ram will be occupied in the uh, main memory by operating system always to make it uh, the use of use for the user and uh, it will act as an interface that main one program is called as a kernel program and the kernel there are uh, two types of uh, along with the kernel there are other two types of programs we will load so one is system program system programs uh, like as i said uh, which is not necessarily an operating system but with are associated with an operating system of the kernel i will explain that what are those system programs are uh, in the upcoming uh, classes like for example when you are running a, a compiler compiler that happens i mean like uh, it has a linker loader uh, associated with the many things which is not an operating system but still uh, you need them to make it your application work right uh, likewise if uh, the application programs are uh, which include all programs not associated with the operating system like the application programs is like what we are trying to do now like microsoft teams uh, microsoft teams is in a program uh, windows operate windows uh, sorry uh, vlc media player is an application program uh, browser your chrome is a application program microsoft office is an application program you are trying to run that uh, on the top of operating system to make uh, to make it work which is nothing to do with your operation of the operating system uh, they are application programs but beside that there are some system programs like uh, firewall firewall uh, is also part of operating system but it will help you or defend uh, to some extent right for example this is uh, <clears throat> give me one second now i am connected to this lan right the, when i want to connect this to this lan uh, if you see this some application let me show this uh the net you see here intel 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 or ethernet connection something is there right which is a device driver inside a device driver is running with intel ethernet uh, if i can see the properties you will be get some information which are system programs okay uh, that is not an operating system but uh, in order to make my internet connection uh, good enough uh, it will help me to provide an interface of uh, software right uh, so this is some network adapters some applications they are all system programs you can say that they are system programs uh, but they are not operating system but they are still needed to make it some uh, we can say that device drivers is one sort of system programs but they are closely associated with the kernel not exactly operating system uh, you would have observed like whenever you insert whenever you insert a usb drive or whenever you insert first time the hard disk it will take some time to install the program and you will be able to see at the end uh, usb is ready to use have you observed that yes sir why yes, why sir. Does it, why it does that sir it will install the driver for usb exactly so that's where the system programs will come that is not an application that is not an operating system but in order to make an interface between your uh, device and operating system a system program must needed in between does it make sense yes sir what is that something uh, called device something any device you install any device first time it will make you to install device driver okay yeah I will, device driver Oops. i will i will explain that i will explain that okay in the coming slides i will explain so there is, if you see uh, from a, a mobile operating system mobile operating system often include not only a core kernel but also a middleware the in mobile operating system it's slightly different we will get a middleware the middleware is also a set of uh, software frameworks 
that provides additional services to the application developers. For example, the software that supports your database, the software that supports your multimedia, software that supports your graphics, uh, so on and so forth. Okay, they are they are all middleware, uh, which is exclusively uh, coming with respect to mobile operating system. Okay. Right. So in summary, when you want to define operating system, the operating system includes always a running kernel, middleware frameworks that uses application development and provide features and system programs that aid uh, in managing the system while it is running. So these are the main things when we want to define operating system, we need to keep in our mind. OK. So <clears throat> having having discussed this, all these things, let us now try to understand what is a computer system organization. A typical a personal computer system will look like this. Uh, so you got processor, you got disk control, you got uh, disks, um, USB control. USB control is again you can connect mouse via USB, keyboard via USB, my uh, printer via USB, and USB controller is there. You got a monitor, you got graphics adapter. This graphics adapter will help you to see. Uh, you can able to see my laser point is moving. This is also one sort of graphics, right? You will able to see the black font. You can able to see the red font. You can able to see the uh, different uh, points. Uh, different uh, colors, so different graphics you will be able to see on my screen because of uh, this graphics uh, graphics adapter. So, uh, whatever it is. <clears throat> so, but however, all these resources will share a common memory. You have only one RAM. It, the size might be different, like 8 GB or 16 GB, but the RAM is common. Uh, all these applications has to share the uh, RAM. Uh, this is how a computer uh, system organization will look like that we uh, studied. But if you see that a modern general purpose computer system may have one or more CPUs uh, and a number of device device controllers connected to a common bus. So here you have a USB controller, you got three connections to USB controller. So these are all, these are all different uh, uh, hardware devices connected to memory using a common system bus. Okay, a common system bus will help you to interconnect all these hardware devices or uh, device controller. Uh, yeah, device controller, right? A number of device controllers. Uh, this is what we are using general purpose computer system nowadays. One or more CPUs and a number of device controllers connect to the common bus that provides the access between the components and the shared memory. Now suppose if processor wants to show something, I mean like I want to see something on monitor, I will click mouse, this mouse will communicate to the USB controller, USB will controller will load into memory and from memory it will go to CPU, then CPU will execute that instruction, that instruction will go to monitor to display. This is, is right. So the common system bus is way it connects the, all the components and uh, device drivers. Now the CPU, uh, every time it will look into memory for access or when an application wants to execute it, to go to the CPU, it will load into the memory. Now each device controller is in charge of a specific type of devices. For example, you want to listen an audio, you need to install uh, audio driver. You want to see something graphics visually, you need to install the uh, uh, graphics driver, okay? So they control their respective devices. Depending on the controller, if more than one device may be attached, like for instance, USB port can be, suppose I have only one USB port, I can install a USB hub, which will make again three, four uh, multiple options, right? You understand what is USB hub, right? USB hub will look like no, this. Sir. No, sir. Okay, let me show this. See, USB hub will look like this. Uh, let me show a better picture. So this is a USB hub. It will look like this. Uh, so suppose I got one USB. 
what i'll do i will connect this usb into my system now i got one two three four options of usb uh, this is usb hub now i can install i can insert uh, uh, one more hard drive or one, one more pen drive one more printer in that still i'll be able to, I'll be able to access that okay so this is usb hub usb 3.0 is a version if you see blue color that is 3.0 if you see black color that is 2.0 the reason is 3.0 is speed it's much speeder uh, for data transfer uh, than black color so thus this that's, that's 3.0 uh, four ports hub you got four ports uh, hub so an usb controller if i have only one usb controller if i connect a usb hub i'll be able to provide to four more devices the access but still my usb able usb controller will be able to handle that okay so that's what i'm trying to say here depending on the controller more than one device may be attached okay so for instance one usb port can connect to a usb hub to which several devices can connect right so a device controller maintains some local buffer storage and a special purpose registers uh, The device controller is responsible for moving the data from uh, data between the peripheral devices and controls and uh, local local buffer storage. So, if this is not making sense, you can hold on for some point when I explain uh, when I explain the memory, what is register, what is cache, what is main memory, what are the different memories. You'll be able to understand. That. But uh, the way a computer organization, computer system organization is set up, I guess up to this point, is it making sense? Up to these four points? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, uh, what is this register, purpose, special purpose registers, buffer storage? I will explain that. You please bear with me. I'll explain that. So typically operating system have a device driver for each device controller. Okay. I said that uh, to make you understand uh, simply uh, when you put an USB drive, you would observe that when it is ready to use because a device driver is running inside that, but it happens to each and every device. You connect the first time printer, you connect first time uh, your uh, smartphone using a data cable, you connect first time your uh, any application wireless mouse or wireless keyboard first time a device driver by use by default it will install you can see that how many device drivers are there uh, in your system i think you see the device manager you can click start here go to device manager you will be able to see how many device drivers are there for what application you can able to see so for example for audio input outputs these are all the device drivers which are running background. Uh, real tech high definition audio, which I installed the device driver, which is running ba background for camera USB video devices there for computer. Uh, this one, this drivers display HD graphics 4600 is running behind for CD DVD uh, for human interface USB input device for keyboard HID keyboard device. So these are all programs. Okay, these are all programs. You can update them. You can update your driver. You can disable your device driver. You can un uninstall. You can uh, change change the driver. Okay, these are all softwares. These are all softwares. We are also called as a device drivers. You can see that uh, we can update the driver if the better version is coming. We can update the driver. In the driver details. You can able to see that uh, this is developed by Microsoft. Uh, you can uninstall or update the driver and so on and so forth. You for mouse, uh, for monitor, uh, for network adapters. Network adapters is like Ethernet connection, how uh, the LAN connected. Likewise, for other uh, devices, like each and every port. Communication port is what USB ports are, right? Uh, likewise, system devices. You see that for each and every hardware inside that universal bus. Okay, for each and every application, there are a lot of device drivers running, uh, running background. For example, see for the processors, the device drivers are running like Intel Core i7 4000. Uh, the CPU. This is a device driver which is running. 
for printer i installed uh, hp i think uh, it should be there okay software devices so for each and every hardware you can able to see that there are a lot of device drivers are installed in the background the device drivers are running okay so the operating system when uh, we have a device driver for each and every device and it controls that how the device will work so this device driver will understand the device controller and provides the rest of the operating system with a uniform interface to the device the processor and the device controllers can execute in parallel competing for the memory cycles to ensure an orderly access of the shared memory and the memory controller synchronizes the uh, synchronizes the access to the memory so on the background the device driver and the operating system will coordinate with each other uh, for the memory access and how the uh, memory will be accessed in a synchronized way uh, the operating system will help uh, but the operating system typically has to do all the job but again the device driver is helping even better way uh, to communicate between the hardware and the operating system to make the job even more easier okay is it is it is it okay is it makes sense up to this point so we will take a break because we are talking since 3 to 4 o'clock almost 15 minutes we'll take 10 minutes break uh, now it's 357 you come back at uh, 4405 okay we'll take 5 to 8 minutes break meanwhile if you have any doubts so far you please ask any questions if you have please ask hello sir yes ोग्राम Okay, so the Bootstrap is an independent program. It has nothing to do with your operating system. So when there is no operating system, the Bootstrap will load, and it will see that there is no operating system to load. So it will say ideal, say that uh, the uh, uh, we will not able to find an operating system or CD DVDs are unavailable. Something like that. It will show some message when operating system is not there. So when uh, when you install an operating system. this operating system kernel is linked with bootstrap program so when you turn on power the bootstrap program loads by default then after loading bootstrap program will try to look into uh, the program it is uh, the operating system when you install that kernel link will be attached to the bootstrap then bootstrap will by default load uh, it will load the operating system then uh, the kernel will be loaded the kernel is associated with an operating system so when i install the uh, windows 10 operating system the kernel uh, which load which will be loaded into my main memory will be uh, related to windows 10 operating system suppose when i am using mac os uh, then the kernel image will be loaded will be related to mac os that goes with each and every every operating system will work as independently okay sir thank you so if anything goes wrong with your operating system sometimes blue screen error comes sometimes the, your operating system will get corrupt because when you install some virus the virus will stop making your operating system working mechanism then your operating system will corrupt then uh, when you try to restart it will not work properly because your operating operating system will get corrupted in that case still bootstrap program will load 
then it will again stop working because your operating system is corrupted then you have to reinstall your operating system sir sir what will be the difference between this bootstrap and bios sir? because bios will also be loaded and it turn on computer bootstrap program is a software bios is a hardware something like that okay, you sir. you you google and search the difference what is the difference between bootstrap program and bios BIOS is settings like how we how uh, so suppose I have uh, see I I can install operating system via USB drive I can install operating system via CD drive I can install operating system using hard disk and so on and so forth right I can uh, I can make sure that my BIOS is like way how you are making your bootable program now I can make a setting uh, when I want to install an operating system in BIOS settings you can able to see that. try to see first the usb port if nothing is there then go for cd drive if there is no cd drives go for uh, uh, some other device if none of the devices has no bootable program then whatever the operating system is there you execute that so all the settings will come in bios setup okay sir you can able to uh, see that you can uh, start uh, when you start your computer you press depends on your computer hardware the keys will vary uh, like f8 or f12 uh, or shift uh, alt delete if you are using amd processor depends on your processor or depends on your hardware de device how they designed you can go to the bios settings you can verify that what are the various options are there it will show that what is your process speed what are the settings you can do and you can keep the password uh, how the bias if suppose a bootable pen drive if i insert it will ask you before starting an operating system it will ask you whether to boot it or not if you say boot then it may it may replace your operating system also all the settings will be there in bios setup uh, but bootstrap is the program that where you load your operating system okay sir but still if you are not clear yet uh, you can google and search it and try to get an answer
Shall we start? Yes, sir. <clears throat> All right. Now let us get back to our discussion. Now we'll try to understand what are interrupt, what is interrupt sir. Okay. So, uh, so consider a typical computer operation. A program is performing an input output operation. Okay. Consider a typical pro computer operation where a program is performing some input output operation. So to start an input output operation, for what happens is first the device driver loads uh, the registers in the device controller. <coughs> I told you I'll explain what is device, uh, what is registers, right? So registers is uh, memory uh, that is stored in the motherboard or in the processor itself. Okay, registers are closely stored inside uh, the processor. Uh, to execute uh, some instructions. Now, what happens is like when you when you store a file uh, in your hard disk, that hard disk file is fetched to main memory. That main memory, when it will uh, given to the processor for executing instructions, uh, the processor, although it will take access the set of instructions from main memory, the processor will still have its local way of storing memory using registers. OK, so registers are very fast, faster, very expensive, and uh, it is closely attached with the registers uh, with the processor. OK, so when a processor is trying to execute some instructions, uh, the first immediate memory it will look into is registers. How it will load into resistors is from cache. Cache, uh, why cache is coming to the picture is because uh, the speed of processor is too high. The speed of RAM is very slow. Compare uh, to bridge a gap between this mismatch of speed, you will introduce a cache memory. Cache is also a memory which, which will act as a Again, one more intermediary between your processor and the resistors. OK, uh, so. When a processor is executing some instruction, it is fetched from your hard disk to RAM, RAM to cache, cache to registers and registers. It the processor will execute the instructions. Is it make sense? Yes, sir. I repeat again. Please repeat, sir. I'll yes, repeat, sir. I'll repeat. So when a processor is trying to execute an instruction, by default, it should take from the RAM. OK, RAM is a volatile memory. When the power goes off, all the data goes off. So what you will do by default, you save your file in your hard disk, which is a permanent memory. So in your hard disk, the permanent memory, your files and data is stored. So when you want to execute a file, that file is fetched from your hard disk to RAM and processor is supposed to take that instruction from RAM. This is the ideal working mechanism, right? Is it is it OK up to this point? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now what happens? The processor is so speed. The processor speed is very high. And the RAM speed is very low. Uh, the processor works in a gigahertz per second. One instruct gigahertz means uh, how many, what is gigahertz two to the power of? One millisecond is thousand thousand uh, milliseconds is one second, right? Yes. Sir. Yes. Sir. Right. Now you try to do that uh, like that uh, uh, in terms of time frequency. Uh, one hertz, one gigahertz is almost, I think, if I'm not wrong, one megahertz is uh, two to the power of 20, and one mega gigahertz is two to the power of 30. So, two to the power of 30 instructions per second a processor can execute. What is your process speed? Let, let me see the process speed. See your process speed says that 3.4 gigahertz. What is this mean by 3.4 uh, 
gigahertz means sir, maybe hmm. sir maybe it is 3.4 uh, giga instructions per second something like that right means 3 3 into 2 gigahertz means uh, 2 to the power of 30 correct you can see in terms of uh, memory only see uh, 1 1000 hertz are 1 kilohertz right 1000 hertz are 1 kilohertz so likewise you can see 2 to the power of 10 2 to the power of 20 2 to the power of 30 which will be almost uh, 10 yeah, into 10 1 billion so 1 billion instructions per second into 3.4 that is 3 billion instructions per second it will execute per second is it make sense your processor is that speed those many instructions it can those many instructions it can execute per second right yes sir what do you think what is the speed of ram what would be the speed of ram can anybody guess so in i say in my megabytes in megabytes no that is storage capacity but speed what could be the speed how many uh, instructions can be accessed per second uh, or per minute it it will be like if you want to read one instruction if you want to take one instruction it will be taking uh, maybe around milliseconds okay you can compare the speed the mismatch like milliseconds and uh, to the power of 30 instructions per second uh, you can see that processor is running very speed right but the ram uh, speed which you are providing the instructions to the processor is very slow Does it make sense? Yes, sir. Yes. So when you are reading some instructions from your RAM and your processor is running very slow, what will happen? The process is not used efficiently. The process will run will sit ideally till the instructions is loaded from RAM to processor, right? Yes, sir. The process the process will execute if it has something on it and it is executing. a million instructions per second uh, say what we comp computed 3 billion instructions per second the ram should be able to match the speed to the processor but the design of hardware what we are developing uh, the ram capacity like uh, it is not matching the speed of the processor so to bridge that gap a cache memory came into the picture okay so the cache memory is faster way is faster than the ram and uh, it could be able to provide the instructions more faster than ram to the processor okay so the cache memory uh, is good that it will provide a better speed uh, to make the processor to execute more instructions better than the speed of the ram to mismatch this processor speed and ram speed we introduce a cache memory inside that is this okay yes sir even the processor no need to access cache all the time to execute few instructions it will have its own nearby memory locations called registers okay so the processor regi registers are even faster than cache memory okay so the processor first it will access is registers where the registers will be loaded the instructions it is from cache cache will get instructions from ram ram will get from hard disk but ram cache registers all these are volatile memory okay only hard disk is permanent memory they are all volatile but to mismatch the speed uh, they have all been introduced then you might ask one question uh, if 
cache is faster than ram why can't we replace the ram hardware with the same software as cache uh, uh, ram hardware as same as the cache hardware this is because cache hardware resistors hardware are very expensive it's very costly okay so if you want to you are buying a laptop or a desktop uh, for how much rupees your laptop may be if you are using uh, i5 processor with uh, 4 or 8 gb ram uh, with 15.6 screen you will get around for 50000 50 to 60000 correct yes sir yes sir yes, so sir. if you replace if you replace uh, ram with cache memory then your laptop price will increase to 1 lakh will be able to afford no sir so when they design a computer hardware it should be affordable to the common people at the same time it should work efficiently and hence we are using different sorts of hardware and we, at the same time we are trying to match uh, the speed uh, making the processor used efficiently um, so when an operating system or a device driver loads that's what it happens so here when i say that a device driver uh, it has a local buffer storage uh, a device driver controller maintains some local buffer storage and a special purpose registers this special purpose registers will be specifically used for this application of graphics driver and all these things so the registers is a memory location where it is closely associated with processor and uh, cache will come between processor and ram and ram will come in between uh, cache and hard disk okay so that's where a device controller is responsible for moving data between the peripheral devices it controls to its local buffer storage so device controller will control the uh, data how it is moving to the registers and uh, to the local buffer storage how it will happen because of the device control so anyway we'll come back to this now what let us try to understand what is an interrupt so consider an uh, input output program so to start an input output program what happens the device driver will load the appropriate registers in the device controller so device controller in turn examines the contents of the register to determine what action should take for example read a character from the keyboard keyboard is an input device so at that input device will be loaded into a uh, program so uh, let us now the device controller for the keyboard will examine what are the contents that needs to be uh, what action should take place so what will happen the controller starts the uh, starts for example reading a character when i press something uh, i am pressing down arrow and i am pressing uh, you are able to see the next bullet point right so when i am pressing something what happens is the register will read the down arrow and it it will start the controller this data from this device to the buffer means to the memory to its local buffer now once the data is uh, data transfer is complete the device controller informs the device driver that uh, the down arrow has instruction is given from the user and this uh, data has been loaded uh, and it is finished the operation so this will happen and the device driver then gives control to the other parts of the operating system possibly returning the data or a pointer of the data if the operation was read so whatever the instruction i have given um, the operating system will take from that point of view uh, the device driver will give the control to the operating system uh, then the uh, operating system will read what is the action that need to be take place from the data or the pointer uh, if it was a read for other operations the device driver returns status information such as write completed successfully or device busy so once this operation read uh, the operating system will finish the operation what need to be done then device driver returns the status it is ready what uh, the down arrow what is been pressed that action was completed successfully or if it is not able to do that then it will say that device is busy okay either you will get uh, two options if you want to write something a character from the keyboard and uh, all these things uh, will be carried out step by step 
so let me uh, you, you you let me repeat this point suppose you want to perform some an io operation suppose you want to press something to write a keyboard uh, write something on a keyboard so io operation what it will do the device driver for the keyboard will load the appropriate registers in the device when i press something the device controller examines what is the key that has been pressed what is the action that we need to take place that what is the character suppose if i press a that uh, action that a should be printed on the screen for that it will try to load from my keyboard to a local buffer uh, to the register okay so the controller uh, the device controller from the keyboard uh, from keyboard starts the transfer of data from device to the local buffer once the transfer of the data is complete device controller informs the device driver that is is finished its operation once device driver finished its operation it will hand over the rest of the things to the operating system the device driver then gives control to the other parts of the operating system so the operating system will return the data or a pointer if the operation was a red then for further for other operations the device driver again will come back and say that it is re ready to read the next uh, before before it says that i am ready to read the next character it will say that right operation uh, computer successfully or if if it is busy it will say device is busy then we will even though you are typing the extra keywords it will not work okay so it says that device is busy and how does this all this happens is how do the controller inform the device driver that it has finished its operation how the communication is happening between the device driver and the operating system is because via interrupt okay this is accomplished by interrupt is it make sense what i am trying to say you want me to repeat yes sir okay see suppose this is this is one interface okay this is an input output operation suppose i am writing uh, suppose interrupt i am writing something yes okay the cursor is blinking now i want to something an operation say i want to write s yes. you will be able to re, uh, see the s yes. i i deleted then i'm writing s yes. okay when i'm writing an s what happens on the background is the keyboard device driver if i want if i'm writing something keyboard and you will be able to see in the monitor is because on the background what happens is the device driver for this keyboard will examine what is the action that need to be takes place from the user when i'm trying to press yes the controller the device controller for my keyboard will examine what is the content okay when i press something yes what happens like see when i press something yes the keyboard from usb controller to memory to processor it will go it will execute some instruction right okay now whenever you are trying to do some operation this device controller for a particular device it will examine see it will examine the contents of the registers what is what is the contents of the register whatever i pressed whatever i pressed for example i am ready to press the cursor is blinking i want to read some character from the keyboard okay so now device is ready when i click something the cursor is ready now the uh, uh, the this process is ready for me to write something on the keyboard that's why the cursor is blinking okay when i don't write it will stop when i write something it will it will be ready to read a character from the keyboard once i written something the controller the device controller will start transferring the data yes whatever the letter i have typed it will transfer the data from the device to its local buffer each each device driver has its local buffer and resistors that's what we try try to understand here the device controller mechanism maintains some local buffer storage and a set of special resistors 
so when i press s the s is stored in keyboard local register okay keyboard local register local buffer i mean local buffer so once the data is transferred the device controller informs that <coughs> informs that the device uh, the device controller informs the device driver that it, it finished the operation reading the character s and stored into the local buffer okay now the device driver gives control the other parts of the operating system so whatever the data i typed returning the data or a pointer of the data of the particular operation was a read it will be executed by the operating system from device driver to the operating system then once this is done once the operating system will take over the device driver will say that write completed successfully yes yes came here yes came here means it is successfully suppose when i am typing yes and it is not coming here that means what when i am writing yes something on the keyboard but i am not able to see see on the screen that means that the device is busy device is occupied with something else that the keyboard is not working or the processor is not working uh, the process when it is executing or the buffer something is busy the device then it will show that device is busy all these operations how a controller a device controller inform the device driver that it is finished operation is through an interrupt it will give an interrupt an interrupt is way of communicating some information it's a signal okay yes sir so we have two types of interrupts one is hardware interrupt and software interrupts so hardware may trigger an interrupt at any time by sending a signal to the cpu usually by the way of system bus okay this is when i am typing something on the keyboard that is an hardware interrupt i am trying to interrupt something by typing something okay so every time the device controller will try to scan or read what i am trying to do something and it will send a signal to the cpu see that user is trying to do something with device pay attention that interrupt will be a signal that will be sent sent by device controller to the processor via system bus okay likewise interrupts are used for many other purposes as well and are key part of how operating systems and hardware interact operating systems and how hardware interact uh, interact with each other is uh, via interrupts when the cpu is interrupted it stops what it is doing immediately transfers the execution to a fixed location this fixed location contains the starting address where the service routine for that interrupt is located this interrupt service routine executes on completion the cpu receives the interrupt interrupted communication so before that the processor is running some application whenever i am trying to see the, now the process is running an application of uh, full screen uh, of this microsoft powerpoint now i am going to press escape when i press escape in my keyboard i am sending an interrupt signal to the processor to do something although this process is running the pro uh, the processor after reading the escape it will take that action uh, first it will go to that uh, because i press the escape uh, that interrupt will be read by the processor it will stop doing what it does it will take action of uh, minimizing the screen then uh, after the action is done the processor will go back to run it's the original process what it is running earlier okay when i'm making when i'm making it to full screen again i am sending some interrupt through my uh, left click of my mouse i clicked something left click of my mouse i'm sending some signal to the uh, processor to do something so uh, in the inside what it happens is it's not an operating system is doing that it's a device controller from the mouse device controller is communicating to the operating system okay a device controller is or a device driver is communicating to the operating system via interrupt is it make sense
so <coughs> how operating systems and hardware is interrupted uh, so the controller the device controller informs the device driver using interrupt and also uh, interrupts are used for many other purpose key part is how operating systems and hardware interact with each other so something like this so interrupts will happen interrupts driven input output cycle is so uh, the first step cpu is there device driver initiates uh, an input output suppose a keyboard is pressed or a mouse is pressed some device driver initiates uh, an input output let me take the pointer so what will happen this device driver will transfer the control to the io controller io controller is initiated whatever i am pressed in the input ready uh, output complete or error generate signal all these things will be input control uh, io controller so when i am writing something or it will show output now monitor is also an output right monitor will show the output completely keyboard or mouse will read the input ready uh, or generate some error signal all these things will be part of input output controller when some action takes place in input output controller again the control is transferred to uh, cpu now cpu executing the checks for the interrupts between instructions it will keep on checking whether any interrupts is coming from the input output devices or not the processor will keep on checking once an interrupt coming from an input output controller the cpu receiving interrupt transfer the controller to the interrupt handler now interrupt handler process the data and returns from the input then after this interrupt is handled the cpu resumes processing of the interrupted task then it will again go back to the uh, device driver initiate input output okay so this is how the cycle happens you got input output controller you got processor uh, device driver initiates the device driver is where a particular device will work or not that will decide it will communicate to the input output uh controller which will initiate an input output work either it might be input or output then uh, since the interrupt till the interrupt is coming from the input output controller the cpu is execute it will keep on checking uh, when is there any interrupt is there any interrupt it will keep on checking once this interrupt comes then the transfer the cpu will transfer its control to interrupt handler interrupt handler will process the data returns from the interrupt and cpu resumes the processing of the interrupt from the interrupted task is this clear how the input output controller and cpu con cpu works sir what is the difference between this device driver and io controller input output controller is for each and every device there will be a device controller see each device controller is in charge of a specific type of device okay yes sir every device will have an device controller okay depending on the controller so we call we simply call that as an input output controller instead of device controller we call that as an input output controller that's it sir and how sir device controller and device drivers are different like what is difference between both sir device driver uh, see operator device driver for each device controller is different like device driver is like a whole program is that how this will con device driver is not only for how the device should work or not but it does beyond that right Uh, a device driver understands the device controller and provides the rest of the operating system with an uniform interface to the device you under you read this sentence operating system will have a device driver for each device driver there will be a device controller the device driver will understand the device controller also device driver provides the rest of operating system with an uniform interface to the device is it okay yes sir yes 
and sir also one more question sir sir there you mentioned ki uh, each one of these have uh, their local buffer storage or registers but initially we mentioned ki uh, registers are so costly so sir hum to bahut sare input device use karte hain to matlab ye to uh, we have to use many registers so won't it be no. uh, too much costly no 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 i mean like every time it will be replaced when you press yes every time it will read the old uh, data will be replaced the registers uh, you will not uh, keep on uh, adding the data right you will be replacing the data okay sir sir, sir like all the instruction of the ram have to pass through cache memory or the, some instruction may go directly from the ram to the processor if it is goes from directly from ram to processor then the processor will wait till to read all the instructions should transfer from ram to processor right it will take some time ideally what happens yeah. is ideally what happens is the trans instructions will be transferred to cache sir so like this teams have consumed 700 mb ram and cache is of 5 or 6 mb sir then how it will work where you are saying so like this sir team saps are in task manager i see sir it is consuming like 600 or 700 mb of ram and sir cache memory sir it is very plus of 5 or 6 mb sir then how sir matlab it will transfer all the instructions that's okay see you, your ram is storing your operating system your uh, other application programs it may have sufficient storage space then it will show your ram space is more but cache space uh, it will show only the program which is currently the processor is executing so it okay, will show sir. only less 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 memory that's fine that's totally fine it don't need to be equal shall we go ahead yes sir so yes, sir. i will we will discuss the storage structure then we will stop okay Uh, for today's class then we will continue from the next class so see when a cpu can load instructions only from memory uh, so any programs must be first loaded into the memory to run right if a processor want to execute uh, any instructions it will load only from memory and uh, if it has to run it has to be loaded into the memory the general purpose computers run most of their programs using main memory which is also called ram but main memory commonly implemented using a semiconductor technology called dynamic random access memory dram okay so computer use other forms of memory as well uh, for example when we run a computer when you run on computer power on a simple bootstrap program which is loaded which then loads the operating system since ram is volatile okay this is what we are discussing right the first program that will load is bootstrap which will link to your operating system then the operating system will be loaded but if a cpu has to execute some instruction it has to come to the ram from ram it will go to the processor but i will show you uh, some more some more uh, example i will show subsequently what will happen so ideally what we want the programs and data to reside in the main memory permanently but this arrangement is not possible because main memory is too small to store all the needed programs and data permanently and main memory is volatile means it loses its concern when the power is turned off otherwise it's lost that's why all the computer systems we are using provide secondary storage which is an extension of main memory the main memory requirement for secondary storage it's is to be able to hold uh, the large quantities of data permanently so your hard disk stores the data permanently your ram is a primary memory which is uh, limited so for example your secondary memory might be 1 tb but your ram may be only 4 gb or 8 gb still that will work so your ram will take the data from your hard disk it will load what are the programs that need to be executed and it will give to the processor right so that's how we we were uh, trying to understand that so in larger sense the storage structure that we discuss consisting of registers main memory secondary storage is one of the many possible storage system designs the other possible components include cache memory 
we can include blu-ray cd rom magnetic tapes and so on and so forth the main difference among this various 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 storage systems lies in speed size and volat volat uh, volat volatility means like it will lose when the power goes out you see this structure you see this uh, the resistors is the fastest and closest memory to the processor and uh, next it will come cache memory then it will come main memory so then main memory we can also call as ram uh, this is all these three we can call that as a primary storage so this is faster you can see that faster the access time is very faster but the storage capacity is very smaller this will be very small storage capacity but you come below it's a non volatile memory will come a secondary storage uh, hard disks will come optical disks will come and magnetic this is tertiary storage this is secondary storage secondary storage where your hard disks will come non volatile memory is a, a new idea of you heard about ssd how many of you heard ssd ssd hard disk yes sir yes sir is there yes, any difference yes, is there sir. any difference between ssd hard disk and H hdd hard disk no moving part yes sir sir ssd is fast ssd is fast okay so it has something to do with non volatile memory we'll discuss that we'll discuss what is different between ssd and uh, hdd also but you try to understand this picture the storage device hierarchy magnetic tapes you can store it you can store a uh, large amount of data but to access it is very slow the access time it will take lot of time to read optical disk also it will take lot of time to read uh, but you can store huge amount of data you can store 25 gb in one hard one disk you can able to store using blu ray that we discussed in the previous class again the hard disk uh, where you are permanently stored and non volatile memory they are all secondary storage you can see that resistors they are very expensive their access time is very fast but the storage capacity is very less it can't store huge data if you want to go for a more storage this will become very expensive your computer price will hike to 5 lakhs or 4 lakhs uh, something like that okay because they are very expensive this is make sense yes sir now somebody asked this cache memory is uh, it has to go via cache memory or not it's not must it's one of the design okay see you you got a processor your processor can able to read directly from ram the ram will directly read from hard disk that is one way of doing that what is the disadvantage when you do that you don't have cache in between you don't have cache memory in between your processor is directly accessing from ram and ram is accessing directly from hard disk this will work fine so what will happen if that is a case sir we, we might not be able to use the full potential of our processor because uh, its speed is high and ram speed is low so it won't match exactly so your system will work very slowly okay your system will work very it's not it will be not efficient so, so to increase the efficiency we introduce cache in between that will act as intermediate between the processor and the main memory when i say processor the processor has in the, that is cpu cpu has its own local storage that is called resistors Uh, registers will come as a processor inside the processor memory uh, itself it's a local memory uh, registers are kept inside the processors is it clear is it make sense yes sir okay see the volatile storage will be referred simply as memory non volatile storage retains its contents when even the power is lost that we called as a non volatile storage uh, nvs we call the vast majority of the time we spend on nvs will be on the secondary storage there are two types of non volatile storage one is mechanical one is electrical mechanical is what hdd hard, uh, hard disks if you see 
there are two types storage systems hdd optical disk holographic storage magnetic tape they are all mechanical way of doing things ssd if you talk about ssd flash memory fram nram they are all electrical uh, way of storage so electrical storage will be defined as nvm um, okay um, this storage are way faster but again ssd they are very expensive also compared to mechanical way of storing uh, right now in my system i am using hdd only but the laptops that you are purchasing in the market currently they are using they are introducing this ssd which is way faster way of uh, working the hard disk is faster the access time of ssd is way faster than hdd okay uh, even 256 mb uh, 256 Yes, 256 MB or 512 MB itself uh, will give you a, a bit costly uh, of SSD. You can you can just uh, go through your Amazon or uh, Flipkart, check whether SSD price if it is there. Without SSD, with SSD, you can try to have a comparison. You can see the price difference range. So mechanical storage is generally large and less spec less expensive per byte than electrical storage. Conversely, electrical storage is typically costly, smaller, and faster than the mechanical storage. So these are the two types of non-volatile memory that we can able to understand. Before starting computer system architecture about single processor, multi-processor, we will stop here. Today class we will stop here. We are discussing so many things. But if you have any doubts so far, you can ask me. Whatever discuss the the things, storage structure, uh, you can discuss. You can ask any questions. uh up to this point up to storage structure so computer system architecture we'll discuss next class we'll stop now hello sir yes sir it would be great if you upload this ppts on team sir we might need it like many of the students were not able to join or maybe other reasons uh am i not uploading the slides sir uh, sir please uh, uh, tell where like in ms teams you have uploaded like that yeah. yes okay sir i'll upload today's class see after every class i'll upload the same class uh, files into your team i am uploading now the today's class you can see the previous class slide in your team in inside the team class materials you can able to see the slide or not let me know you will be able to see the first class lecture 1 Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is visible. So now I'll upload today's class file. You can see that whether you'll be able to see or not. will be able to see the slide lecture to introduction to operating systems yes sir it's visible right so you go through the slides again and uh, you let me know if you have any doubts in today's class next uh, tuesday we will discuss so operating systems uh, part 2 uh, introduction to operating systems part 2 will discuss on next tuesday thank you sir thank you sir
थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर